Heidi ho Automatorinos. Today's lesson is all about connecting the social media magic wand to your e-com shop so that you can automate your new product postings. Go ahead and log in to your Make account. And if you don't have one, you can sign up using the link below. If you haven't seen my previous video about the social media magic wand, you might need to watch that to actually be up to speed on what's going on here. What I'm doing today, we are going to connect your e-com store to the social media magic wand so that every time a new product is published, it will blast it out to your social media channels. To do that, I'm going to copy and paste most of the magic wand and get rid of most of it. And I'm doing this just to create a separate workflow with it. I'm going to hold the shift key, then I drag, and now I have all of those modules selected and I can right click any one of them, copy modules, and now we are going to create a new scenario. Once you've got your new scenario created, paste your modules. That puts the magic wand down. And now we have to connect it to the module responsible for returning our new products. One of the first questions that I received after I made the magic wand video was how to apply it to the products on your e-com store or to your print on demand. Instead of connecting my magic wand to the end of that process, there's a much easier way to do it. When you add a starter module, different platforms will have a watch. And watch is something that you can only do on a starter module. It's meant to be the original input to trigger the entire workflow. So we're going to do Shopify and I'm going to search for watch. And what I want to do is watch products. This is going to watch my product feed. Let me select the store that I want to watch. And I'm going to leave everything blank because all I really want to do here is return the one most recent product that was just published. So I'm going to say active, published, and I'm going to limit to one and click OK. Then we get Right here, we're hit immediately with, do you want to go from now on since a specific date, which allows you to go retroactive a little bit or set it in the future or all or choose manually for what we're going to use this for. If you're wanting it to publish new products, when they get published to your store, you will select from now on that tells the process. Okay. From this timestamp right here, like literally right now, anything published after that is going to feed through this pipeline and dump to all my social channels. So I'm going to click okay. And that's it. Now I'm going to connect it. Once I've connected it, we're not done. We have to modify some of these modules so that it's actually going to do what we want. We now have a module that's set to look for new products. We can schedule it to run at regular intervals. On my website, I publish new products once a day. So I actually set this only to run once every 24 hours. But if you're publishing new products every hour, you can set it accordingly and it will watch for new products on that schedule. The way I've just set this module up, once it returns that product once and blasts it out to your social media, it's not going to return that product again. I also want everyone to be aware that though this lesson is showing you Shopify, pretty much this is going to work for any major platform that has a module built in to make. So whether that is Wix, WooCommerce, BigCommerce, Squarespace, etc., as long as you're setting that module up as the entry, the beginning module, the scheduler module, you will usually have an option to watch product. Now let's run through the configuration of each module. As usual, when you copy paste the social magic wand, you're going to have to do some remapping to get it to work properly. HTTP is mapping the image return from watch a product. Click there, drill under images, and then we have source. How do I know that? Just from experience, wherever you see SRC, it's typically going to return a URL. And in this case, it returns the product image. Then we have our chat completion that's generating our social media posts. And there's really not a whole lot different here, except I've based the content descriptor where I say your content will be describing the photograph in this product description. And it's basing it on body HTML, which just so you know, that is the product description on Shopify. Click OK. And then we have our Facebook module. This one, we're using a slightly different module. So when I zoom in, I'm using create a post. This is not 
upload a photo or create an image post. This is just create a post. And the reason I've chosen to do this, our third field is link. And when you post a link on Facebook, it automatically pulls the image. That's just something about the platform. It pulls the thumbnail if it exists. And in this case it does. So the way you can have this process grab the URL, you have to manually enter the first part of it. So for you, that might be your domain name. In the case of my example shop I'm running right here, it's just my subdomain.myshopify.com slash products. And then I mapped to the handle that comes out of the watch product module. So right here under my mapping, under watch products, handle. Now the handle is only this page that it's actually sitting on. So usually that's just the name of the product with a bunch of slashes on this platform. It will be different for each platform, but the handle will be the same. You will have to manually supply the first part of the URL and then the handle will grab the specific page for the product. That's how you format it to get this to work. Click OK and then we're going to go to Instagram and the same is true. For the photo URL, we're going to do the same thing that we did for HTTP. We are going to map to the image source. So under watch products, drill under image, and then source. That, that pulls the image from the URL. Now Shopify is happy. For our caption, I'm using my fallback match, which grabs my social media post set for Instagram. And then I'm providing my link right here, which will post the link underneath it. Instagram doesn't have clickable links, but I still like to provide it. Then we have Tumblr. Tumblr, I'm using my fallback match as the caption. And again, under the link, same format. And then I'm supplying my photo, external URL, and again, referencing the image that is coming out of watch products. Basically, all of these are going to be some variation of repeating. So image URL, same, mapping there. You have to define an actual title here. And so that's one thing that'll get a lot of people snagged with Pinterest is it'll error out, but you actually have to supply a title, which you can either generate with another chat module if you want to, or in this case, I'm just using generic images, which load into the system as a sequential image, like image better futures dash one dash two, that kind of thing. Doesn't bother me. Description, fallback match. Okay. Then we've got Twitter. So... I mean, do you really need me to walk through each one of these? They're all basically set up the same, but the difference being, of course, if you want to add your URL, you format it as such, and you can grab the title. You know what? I can change that back over there, and I might do that. So let's check it out. Where it has title and body HTML, this is grabbing the product description. This is grabbing the product title, both from Watch Products. I'm going to backtrack up to Pinterest, and let's see, instead of this title, maybe I'm going to grab this title. So I'm going to grab watch products title, but I'm pretty sure I still have to title it .jpg or that'll error out. We'll find out here in a second. All right. LinkedIn, do the same. So now we are ready to run this process. Let's take this scenario for a spin. Click run. And there we go. Notice what happened. It went through the Shopify module, but then just stopped. It didn't process any of the rest of my modules. And the reason for that, in between the time that it took to set this up and when I just hit run, no new products have been published to my store. So if no new products have been published, it has nothing to push to my social media platforms. I have to go over to my print on demand workflow, crank out another product, and then we'll have something to pick up here. So let's go do that real quick. All over print hoodie. Give that a run. Generate a new hoodie. <coughs> Sweet. Published a new hoodie. And let's go back into the other workflow. Now I should be able to trigger this scenario and it should execute because it has a new product to grab. See? Now it's moving right along in the process. It's grabbed the images from Shopify and it is now distributing my product image post 
to all of my platforms, or this post is going to end up in a clickable product link, rather. Bam. Pinterest. Executing LinkedIn. Oh, you know what? Cool. It almost went through Twitter. Looks like I think it is exceeded the length on my Twitter posts because I have a free Twitter account. You might have also noticed when that was running that these two legs of my scenario executed out of order. The reason that happened, last week I was in Twitter jail, so I disconnected this leg, and now that I've reconnected it, it is now the last series that I connected. So if you don't already know this, and it took me a few months of using Make until I figured this out, it runs your process tree in the order in which you connected the branches. So if you've created a scenario in some kind of logical order, and then later on you have a reason to say move modules around or reconfigure them, and then you connect them again, you'll find that when you run your scenario, it's running in all sorts of crazy orders. And the way you would want to correct that is you have to unlink it and relink them in the series as you want them to run. So if I wanted this to run with my Twitter leg running first before LinkedIn, I would need to unlink each of these, unlink that, and then I would relink them in the order that I want them to execute. Honestly, it really doesn't matter for this process which order these execute, so unless I'm just really OCD, there's no functional reason to change this particular scenario. Ah, uh, I just published to the wrong Facebook page. Let's check that out. Yeah, I meant to publish to my hoodie shop, but I published to the the future city thing that I made the other day. And I kind of did that in Instagram just because I don't have a motherfunker channel for my uh my hoodie for my all over print shop. So yeah, let me go back over to Facebook and we will go back over to Imagine Better Futures. And there's the hoodie post. <laughs> cool, cool. And we have Instagram. We have Pinterest. And we have LinkedIn. Clickable links to my test store. That's it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give me a like and a subscribe if you enjoy my content and it's helped you. I hope this can help you 10x your profits by blasting all your new products to all platforms at once. As usual, I've got templates down below if you don't want to have to walk through the configuration manually. Thank you very much. Onward and upward. Um.